Hi, welcome back to General Chemistry. My name is Chuck White, and today's lesson is on atoms and elements. We're going to talk about the law of definite proportions, and we'll talk about the law of multiple proportions. They're similar, but not exactly the same. And we'll talk a little bit about the discovery of atoms and electrons and the structures of atoms. Now, we'll start by a conversation where we try to uh, take a material, say gold for example, and break it down into smaller and smaller bits. It turns out that as as far as we can break down gold, it always retains the basic properties of gold until we get down to the atomic level, which is pieces of matter which is about the size of one nanometer, or 10 to the minus nine meters. This is an image from an atomic force microscope showing the surface of gold uh, at a very small scale, where you can begin to resolve the individual atoms on the surface of the material. Now, at each one of those atoms uh, will have characteristic properties, but that's as small as you can break the material down. And each atom consists of a very small nucleus surrounded by uh, 79 electrons in the, t in the case of gold. Now, compounds are similar. If you consider water, for example, uh, it, a drop of water or a glass of water or a lake full of water, all water has about the same properties until you get down to the scale of molecules, which are a few atoms that are bound together strongly by chemical bonds. This is a computer-generated image of a collection of water molecules, and the oxygen atoms in each molecule are colored red, and the two hydrogen atoms in each molecule are colored white, and the molecules are uh, bound to each other by very weak chemical bond bonds called hydrogen bonds, and they're represented in this picture by the green uh, bars. Now, there are many different ways of representing uh, water molecules, and uh, as chemists I'm showing about four of them. Uh, in the lower right-hand corner, there's just a chemical formula which depicts that there's twice as many hydrogen atoms as oxygen atoms in each water molecule. Uh, above it, there's a space-filling model which uh, tells approximately the volume of uh, the electron clouds around a water molecule. Uh, there's a ball and stick a model in the upper left which shows uh, that uh, the two hydrogen atoms are bound to a central uh, oxygen atom at an angle, and then there's a diagram in the lower left uh, which shows that the angle is 104.45 degrees, and each of the oxygen-hydrogen bonds is 0.9584 angstroms long. One angstrom is 10 to the minus 8 centimeters, or 10 to the minus 10 um, meters. Now the law of definite proportions says that any chemical compound always contains exactly the same mass fractions of elements. So for water, for example, all water, all samples of water contain 11.19% hydrogen by mass and 88.81% oxygen by mass. It doesn't matter whether you have a drop or an ocean, it's always 11.2% and 88.8%. And uh, the numbers 11.19% and 88.81% are odd numbers because the mass of each hydrogen atom is about 16 times less than the mass of each oxygen atom. We can uh, recast the law of different proportions in a slightly different way by saying that all samples of a given compound have the same elemental composition. So water, for example, always has twice as many hydrogen atoms as oxygen atoms. Or if you count by moles, and we'll see what, the mole, what a mole is in the next lesson, uh, every mole of water has two moles of hydrogen atoms and one mole of oxygen atoms in, uh, in it. And so uh, this 2 to 1 ratio is the chemical composition or elemental composition of um, water, uh, but the law of definite proportions can either be done in terms of atoms, 2 to 1, or in terms of mass fractions, 11.19%, and so on. The law of multiple proportions proportions is slightly different, and that says when atoms combine into compounds, they do so in a ratio of small numbers. So water uh, always has twice as many hydrogen atoms as oxygen atoms. It's a 2 to 1 ratio. It's never 2.1, it's never 2.85, uh, it's always a simple uh, ratio of small numbers like 2 to 1. Hydrogen peroxide, which is a, a different compound, uh, 
each molecule has two hydrogen atoms and two oxygen atoms, and so the atom atomic ratio is one to one uh, by atom or by mole. Now the structure of atoms is that each atom is composed mostly of empty space. Uh, every atom is composed of a very, very small nucleus, uh, which contains most of the mass of the atom. And nuclei contain protons, which have plus one electric charges, and neutrons, which have zero electric charges. And they are contained in a very small nucleus. In helium, for example, the nucleus is about one femtometer, or 10 to the minus 15 meters in diameter whereas the uh, diameter of an atom is of the order of one angstrom, uh, which is 100,000 femtometers. So the nucleus is about 100,000 times smaller than the size of the whole atom. Uh, every nucleus is surrounded by a cloud of electrons, and uh, each electron has a minus one negative charge. For um, neutrally charged atoms, there's the same number of protons uh, as electrons, so that uh, the charges balance out. For neutrons, the number of neutrons is often similar to the number of protons, but doesn't have to be exactly the same. Every electron uh, has a very light mass. It's about one two thousandth of the mass of a proton or a neutron. And what that means is that uh, more than 99.99% of the mass of every atom is contained in the nucleus, but, it contain, but that nucleus occupies an extremely small fraction of the total volume of the atom. So how did we discover this? In 1809, in 1909, Ernest, Ernest Rutherford did some groundbreaking experiments where he scattered alpha particles, which are helium nuclei, uh, from gold foil. And uh, with very, very thin foils, most of these alpha particles uh, go right through the foil. Rutherford observed uh, or predicted that if the positive charge and negative charge in atoms were dispersed more or less evenly throughout uh, the atom, then these alpha particles should all go straight through the foil if it's thin enough. What he actually observed is that a relatively small number of these alpha particles was deflected strongly at uh, uh, very wide angles by something in the uh, in the atom. And so that told him that uh, most of the mass of the atom had to be concentrated in an extremely small volume in the center uh, of, the, uh, of the atom. And in the case of gold, it said that the uh, gold nucleus had to be smaller than 10 femtometers in uh, size. And so this plum pudding model, uh, which had originally been proposed for atoms, was in fact wrong. And the nucleus model that we accept today was the correct structure for the uh, structure of atoms. Now the size of an atom is determined by the size of the electron cloud around the nucleus. And that's because electrons are negatively charged, and the electrons in one atom will repel the electrons in the neighboring atoms. And so uh, these clouds, which are uh, bound by the the nuclei have a definite size, and the repulsion from cloud to cloud uh, really determines the size of atoms. So now we know that electrons occupy uh, greater than 99.99% of the space of, uh, in an atom, but a very small fraction of the mass. And uh, at electrons, furthermore, are responsible for all of the chemistry of atoms and molecules. So it's important to know their properties. The mass to charge ratio of the electron was determined in experiments which deflected uh, a beam of electrons in a cathode ray tube. It's the same principle that's used in the old-style televisions, uh, uh, which have cathode ray tubes in them, which paint an image on the, on the screen. Not the newer uh, plasma uh, TVs or the LCD TVs, but the old-style old style cathode ray tubes. The electric charge of the electron was determined by Robert Millikan in a famous oil drop experiment where he charged oil drops and then levitated them between two charged plates. And uh, he measured the electric field that was necessary to levitate the droplets uh, against the opposing force of gravity. And so that told us both the charge and the mass of the electrons. Next time we'll talk about the periodic table of elements and we'll talk about Avogadro's number and the mole. We'll see you then.